Then human scientists detected a novel extraterrestrial virus carried by the Ulians, harmless to humans, but potentially catastrophic if spread to the aliens' arid homeworld. When Ramos urged quarantine, Vorta scoffed. Certain superior Ulian tech would easily cure the Terran sniffles. Three weeks after Vortis's departure, reports of a deadly plague ravaging Ulia Prime reached Earth. At the CDC, virologist Dr. Shen made a stunning realization. The alien virus was nearly identical to an ancient waterborne bacteria that resurfaced during Earth's climate crisis of the 2090s. Humans who survived developed immunity that was passed to future generations. The UNS Nightingale hurtled through the void, its fusion drives burning bright against the starry backdrop. On board, Dr. Shen stared out the observation viewport, watching Earth recede to a pale blue marble. She couldn't shake the feeling that they were sailing into the unknown, a microcosm of humanity's fate tied to the success of their desperate mission. In the ship's cramped medical bay, Dr. Patel and the international team of virologists huddled over their portable equipment, analyzing the latest data on the alien plague. Ulian physiology was vastly different from anything they had encountered, the virus unlike any terrestrial pathogen. They worked in grim silence, all too aware that every passing minute meant more lives lost. Unbeknownst to the Nightingale's crew, the Ulian battlecruiser closed in, its advanced stealth technology rendering it invisible to human sensors. On the bridge, Commander Zorin paced like a caged beast, his eyes fixed on the display tracking their quarry. The humans are hiding something, he growled, his voice thick with paranoia and rage. They created this abomination, and now they pretend to help? No, they're coming to finish what they started, to wipe us out while we're weakened. His second-in-command, a grizzled warrior named Tarn, spoke up cautiously. Commander, we have no proof of that. The Earthers have shown no aggression. Perhaps their intentions are genuine. Zorin whirled on him, eyes blazing. You've grown soft, Tarn. Too much time among the lesser species. These primates are devious, but we'll expose their treachery. We'll make them confess or break them in the attempt. As the Purity Brigade's ship hurtled through the void in pursuit, an atmosphere of dread seemed to permeate the very bulkheads. Only the true believers shared Zorin's fervor. The rest whispered that he had gone mad, that his obsession would lead them all to ruin. If the Nightingale fell into his hands... Ramos shuddered at the thought. He had sent them into the dragon's maw, and now he could only pray that he hadn't doomed them all. The weight of his decision pressed down like a mountain, threatening to crush him. There could be no turning back. The mission had to succeed. If Dr. Shen and her team failed, it wouldn't just mean the end of the Ulian civilization. It would mean the end of hope itself. The UNS Nightingale streaked through the endless void, a solitary beacon of hope against the encroaching darkness. In the cramped confines of the ship's bridge, Captain Jake Hernandez hunched over the sensor readouts, his brow furrowed in concentration. The pursuing Ullian battlecruiser loomed on the long-range scanners, an ominous specter drawing ever closer. They've made us, Hernandez growled, his voice tight with tension. Helmsman, initiate evasive pattern Delta-5. Comms, cut all non-essential transmissions. We're going dark. The bridge crew leapt into action, their movements precise and coordinated. The Nightingale banked hard to port, its fusion drives flaring as it sought to evade its relentless pursuer. In the medical bay, Dr. Shen and her team worked with feverish intensity, oblivious to the unfolding drama. Dr. Li Wei, hunched over a high-resolution electron microscope, suddenly straightened, his eyes wide with excitement. I've got something, he exclaimed, his voice trembling with awe-inspiring elation. The virus's surface protein, it's the key to how it infects Ullian cells. If we can find a way to block it... Chitra. Over half our population has already perished, Zora's recording pleaded, her voice raw with anguish. Our society teeters on the brink of total collapse. Please, in the name of all that is good and just, help us. Ramos clenched his fists, his fists tight. He keyed the calm, his voice steady and assured. Hi, Chancellor, I give you my word. Help is on the way. Humanity will not abandon you in your hour of need. As the Nightingale neared Ulia Prime, the looming shape of the Purity Brigade's battlecruiser filled the viewscreen, 
its hull overflowing with weaponry. The calm crackled to life, the sneering visage of Commander Zorin filling the display. Human vessel, this is your only warning, he snarled, his eyes blazing with fanatical hatred. Surrender now or be destroyed. Your choice. Captain Hernandez rose from his chair, his bearing proud and unyielding. This is Captain Jake Hernandez of the UNS Nightingale. We are on a mission of mercy, carrying a team of scientists who may hold the key to stopping the plague that ravages your people. We will not surrender. Zoran's face contorted with rage, his finger stabbing toward the screen. Then you have sealed your fate, human. Prepare to... Commander Zoran! Jackson's voice boomed across the comm, his tone steely with authority. By order of High Chancellor Zora, you and your followers are declared traitors to the hegemony. Stand down immediately or face the consequences. For a long, tense moment, silence reigned. Then grudgingly, Zoran signaled his compliance. The Purity Brigade vessel powered down its weapons, falling into formation beside Jackson's fleet. There, she exclaimed, her eyes bright with excitement. The antibody binds perfectly to the virus's surface protein. Dr. Zira's multifaceted eyes widened. Incredible. It's completely neutralizing the pathogen's ability to infect our cells. We'll stop at nothing to sabotage our efforts, High Admiral Jackson interrupted, his hologram materializing beside her. We need to relocate your team to our most secure facility. Non-negotiable, Jackson cut in. The biolab beneath Ryza Prime is impenetrable. It's our only option. Reluctantly, the research team packed up their equipment. As they boarded the transport to the capital, Dr. Shen caught a glimpse of their new guardians, grim-faced Ulian soldiers led by a scarred veteran. His eyes met hers, and she saw a flicker of... something. Distrust? Resentment? She pushed the words from her mind, focusing on the task at hand. Time was running out. Days blurred together as they worked to synthesize and test the antibody treatment. Dr. Shen barely slept, surviving on stimulants and sheer willpower. Outside their sealed lab, she sensed the growing tension between the scientists and their military guardians. We're sending reinforcements, he assured them. Captain Hernandez and his team will coordinate with High Admiral Jackson's forces. We're losing entire star systems, Chancellor Zora's hologram reported, her voice heavy with grief. The Clathy. They're on the brink of extinction. Just as they finalized the first treatment doses, klaxons blared throughout the facility. The Purity Brigade had breached the outer defenses. Captain Hernandez burst through the door, his face streaked with sweat and grime. We need to move now. They've broken through the... The explosion rocked the facility, showering Dr. Shen with dust and debris. She clutched the container of treatment vials tighter, her squeezing hard with tension. Captain Hernandez's words were cut short as another blast shook the room. Follow me, he shouted, gesturing urgently toward a reinforced door. Dr. Shen and her team scrambled after him, the sounds of combat growing louder with each passing second. They rushed through winding corridors, alarms blaring and emergency lights casting eerie red shadows. They reached a fortified inner chamber, its thick metal doors sliding shut behind them with a reassuring thud. Dr. Zyra immediately began setting up makeshift lab equipment, her multifaceted eyes darting nervously between her work and the sealed entrance. Outside, the staccato of weapons fire intensified. Captain Hernandez's comm unit crackled to life, Sergeant Keth's gruff voice coming through. Hernandez's mind focused. Acknowledged. We'll hold the line here. He turned to the scientist, his expression grim. Stay put. We'll keep them out as long as we can. Suddenly, a deafening explosion shook the very foundations of the facility. The reinforced door buckled inward, smoke pouring through the newly formed gaps. Zoran's finger tightened on the trigger. Lies! You seek to poison our people? To finish what your kind started? The tense standoff was broken by the arrival of an unexpected figure. Chancellor Zora swept into the room, her regal bearing a stark contrast to the destruction around her. That's quite enough, Zorn, she said, her voice laden with authority. Your treachery ends here. Zora's lips curled into a thin smile. We have friends in unexpected places. Human intelligence warned us of your plans. 
As Zorin and Zora locked into a heated debate about the future of Ulian civilization, Dr. Shen's attention was drawn to movement near the shattered doorway. Captain Hernandez, bloodied and barely standing, locked eyes with her. In that moment, she understood his intent. With a surge of desperate energy, Hernandez hurled himself at Zorin. The single shot that rang out seemed to freeze time itself. The commander's eyes rolled back, his body convulsing as the treatment coursed through his system. Zora's guards swarmed in, restraining the weakened Zorin. In the sudden quiet, Dr. Shen rushed to Hernandez's side. The captain's breathing was labored, blood seeping from a wound in his chest. Did we... did we do it? he gasped. As medics arrived to tend to the wounded, Dr. Shen's gaze fell on the secure canisters containing the antibody. The battle was won, but the true challenge, distributing the cure to a fractured, distrustful galaxy, was only beginning. Hernandez nodded grimly. Chancellor Zora's already on it. She's converting half of Ulia Prime's industrial capacity to synthesize the treatment. As they docked with the lead Ullian ship, Dr. Shen felt a flicker of hope. The vast holds of the cargo vessels would soon be filled with life-saving medicine, ready to be distributed across the plague-ravaged hegemony. But that hope was short-lived. Hours after the first transport ships departed, alarms blared throughout the Nightingale. Dr. Shen rushed to the bridge, where a grim-faced Hernandez stood before a holographic display of Secretary General Ramos. The Secretary General explained the mounting pressure from Earth's nations to withhold the treatment, using it as leverage against the Ulians. Dr. Shen felt her blood run cold as Ramos detailed the demands for concessions in the ongoing galactic war. This is unconscionable, Chancellor Zora's hologram flickered to life, her multifaceted eyes flashing with anger. Millions are dying, and you would use their suffering as a bargaining chip? Chancellor, please understand, Ramos began, but Zora cut him off. No, you understand this, she hissed. We fought side by side. Your people bled alongside mine to create this cure. And now you betray that trust? As the argument intensified, Dr. Shen slipped away, her mind blown. She found herself in the observation deck, staring out at the stars. The vastness of space seemed to mock the pettiness of the political maneuvering that threatened countless lives. You heard, the Ullian scientist asked softly. Before Dr. Zira could respond, another alarm sounded. They rushed back to the bridge where a tactical display showed a fleet of human warships taking up positions along key Ulian supply routes. What's happening? Dr. Shen demanded. Captain Hernandez's face was a mask of hardly restrained fury. President McCallum has ordered a blockade. They're calling it humanitarian patrols, but it's clear they're choking off the treatment distribution. Dr. Shen watched in horror as reports flooded in from across the hegemony. On Zarath, the Kabali homeworld, riots erupted as news of the delayed shipment spread. Matriarch Kalara's impassioned plea for aid was cut short by static as communication relays were overwhelmed. This is madness, Dr. Shen whispered, her hands clenching into fists. We have to do something. Dr. Shen stepped off the shuttle onto Ulya Prime soil, her heart heavy with the weight of her decision. The sprawling capital stretched before her, its gleaming spires a stark contrast to the turmoil brewing beneath the surface. Chancellor Zora met her at the entrance to a nondescript building, her multifaceted eyes darting nervously. Quickly, she hissed, ushering Dr. Shen inside. Welcome to Project Neutralizer, Zora said, her voice barely above a whisper. As they neared a breakthrough, alarms blared throughout the facility. Zora's aide burst into the lab, panic etched on his features. Chancellor, human warships have launched missiles toward Riza Prime. Zora's face hardened. How long? Twenty minutes until impact. If we're wrong about this, she warned Zora, we could be unleashing something far worse than the original plague. The Chancellor's eyes met hers, filled with unyielding commitment. And if we do nothing, billions will die. We have no choice. Human missiles have gone dark. Kobali Battlefleet is dead in space. Weapon systems across the planet are shutting down. A collective sigh of relief echoed through the lab, but Dr. Shen knew their work was just the beginning. As they prepared for the emergency summit, 
Dr. Shen couldn't shake the nagging fear in the back of her mind. They had averted one disaster, but at what cost? The neutralization virus now permeated the air of multiple worlds, its long-term effects unknown. She steeled herself for the negotiations ahead. The path to peace would be treacherous, but for the first time in months there was hope. As if to underscore her point, a nearby hollow screen flickered to life with breaking news. Grainy footage showed mass vaccination clinics on the Clothy homeworld, former military bases now swarming with aid workers and grateful civilians. Dr. Shen's blood ran cold. That's impossible. The antibodies should have... The effect... Initial reports indicate a new strain. Your treatment... It's not working. McCallum's face darkened with fury. I knew it. This was all a ploy to... A deafening explosion rocked the landing pad. Through the billowing smoke, Dr. Shen caught glimpses of figures in salvage purity brigade armor. Gunfire erupted, and she dove for cover behind a nearby shuttle. We have to get out of here, she shouted to no one in particular. As chaos engulfed the summit, Dr. Shen's mind raced. A mutated plague, ineffective antibodies, and now a coordinated attack. The pieces began to fall into place, painting a horrifying picture. She needed to get back to her lab. Now. If there was any hope of averting catastrophe, it lay in decoding this new viral strain before it was too late. Crawling through acrid smoke, Dr. Shen spotted a gap in the firefight. She made a desperate sprint for a small atmospheric shuttle, praying she remembered enough from her pilot training to get off-world. As she strapped herself in, alarms blaring all around her, Dr. Shen caught a glimpse of several human relief workers being dragged away by the attackers. Their vacant eyes and shambling gates told her everything she needed to know. The new plague was already here, and it was about to spread across the stars. The shuttle rocketed into the atmosphere, leaving the chaos of Tyrannus Prime behind. But as the stars came into view, Dr. Shen knew the true nightmare was only beginning. Hours later, she stumbled into the Ulia Prime Medical Lab, exhaustion etched on her face. Status report, she demanded, eyes scanning holographic displays. Shen's fingers flew across a console, pulling up genetic sequencing data. How is that possible? The original plague couldn't have mutated this rapidly on its own. It's spreading too fast, Shen muttered, mind whirling. We need to isolate the molecular structure, find vulnerabilities. Work faster, Zora snapped. Every second counts. Days blurred together as Shen and her team pushed themselves to the brink of collapse. Sleep became a luxury they couldn't afford. Outside the lab, reports of chaos flooded in from across known space. On the Kobali homeworld, Matriarch Kalara's voice crackled over a secure channel. The situation is deteriorating rapidly. We're losing control of entire sectors. Chancellor Zora's hologram flickered beside her. The humans aren't faring any better. McCallum's paranoia is making matters worse. He's ordered the quarantine of all alien delegation transports bound for Tyrannus Prime. Claims he fears a bioweapon attack. Kalara's mandibles clicked in frustration. Madness. We need unity now more than ever. Risky, Kalara mused, but necessary. I'm in. Back in the lab, a shout from Dr. Zira drew Shen's attention. I think we have something. Shen rushed over, hope surging. On the screen, a complex molecular structure rotated slowly. A broad-spectrum antiviral? Zyra nodded. Potentially, it's shown promise in simulations, but... Zora's eyes widened. That's classified information. If it falls into the wrong hands... If we don't, Shen countered, there won't be any hands left to worry about. Our only hope is cooperation on a scale we've never attempted before. Shen's fingers flew across the console, encryption barriers falling away. With a final keystroke, she sent the data hurtling across the stars, a desperate plea for unity in the face of annihilation. As the transmission completed, alarms blared once more. On screens throughout the lab, footage from Tyrannus Prime played out in horrifying detail. Infected humans shambled through crowds of delegates, their vacant eyes and bloody mouths spelling doom for the fragile peace. Shen watched, heart pounding, knowing that the true test of galactic civilization was only just beginning.
Dr. Shen's eyes remained fixed on the horrific footage from Tyrannus Prime, her mind racing. She took a deep breath, steadying herself against the lab console. Chancellor Zora, she said, her voice low but firm. We need to go further. The data we just released, it's not enough. Zora's multifaceted eyes narrowed. What are you proposing, Doctor? We share everything, the full genome sequence of the mutated virus, to every scientific community we can reach. The lab fell silent. Dr. Zira's tentacles coiled tightly around her terminal. That's madness, she hissed. The bioweapon potential alone is nothing compared to the devastation we're already facing. Shen cut her off, gesturing to the screens. Look at Tyrannus. That's our future if we don't act now. Chancellor Zora paced the length of the lab, her claws clicking against the sterile floor. The hardliners will never agree. They'll see it as handing our enemies the keys to our destruction. Then we go around them, Shen insisted. Reach out to the moderates. Make them understand this is our only shot at a unified response. For a long moment, Zora was silent. Then she nodded. Do it. Shen's fingers flew across the holographic interface, compiling the data package. As she worked, reports flooded in from Tyrannus Prime. Multiple outbreaks reported across the neutral zone, Dr. Zyra announced, her voice tight with concern. Security forces are being overwhelmed. On the main view screen, chaos unfolded. Infected humans shambled through crowds of panicked delegates, their vacant eyes and blood-smeared mouths spreading terror and contagion alike. Gunfire erupted as a group of armed extremists stormed the main summit hall. Purity Brigade, Zora growled. They're executing their attack. Shen watched in horror as the screen split, showing multiple evacuation attempts. Sleek diplomatic shuttles rose into the air, only to lose power and plummet back to the ground in flames. They've sabotaged the ships, she realized. They're trapping them there. A proximity alert blared through the lab. Shen looked up to see a battered transport limping into orbit around Ulia Prime. Shen's blood ran cold. Get them to quarantine immediately and alert Earth. President McCallum's team needs to be checked as well. We got your data package, Patel said without preamble. It's a bold move, Shen. But the right one, Shen insisted. Tell me you're on board. Hope surged through Shen. Send me everything you find. We'll coordinate our efforts. And how do we test these treatments? Zora asked, her voice hollow. We don't have time for standard trials. Shen swallowed hard. We set up controlled isolation colonies, willing test subjects, deliberately infected. The room fell silent once more. Dr. Zira's tendrils writhed in agitation. The ethical implications... As preparations began, Shen felt the weight of billions of lives pressing down on her shoulders. She looked out the lab's viewport, watching as transport ships began to assemble in orbit. I'll oversee the human trials personally, she announced. Dr. Zyra, you'll handle the Ullian testing? As the ships prepared for departure, Shen couldn't shake the feeling that this risky move would either save them all or doom them to a fate worse than death. Progress report, she demanded, striding into the main research hub. A holographic projection of Dr. Patel flickered to life beside her. Patel's expression tightened. That's good news. Our inhibitor drug trials haven't fared as well. A series of medical readouts appeared, each more alarming than the last. Shen's eyes widened as she took in the data. Catastrophic immune overreactions? How many? Seven, Patel admitted, her voice heavy. They're in critical condition. We've had to suspend further human trials. Shen's mind raced. We need to inform Chancellor Zora immediately. This changes everything. Within hours, the Ulian research team had assembled via holographic conference. Tentacles writhed and multifaceted eyes flashed as heated debate erupted. Chancellor Zora's imposing form materialized in the center of the projection. We don't have time for academic debates. Dr. Shen, your recommendation? Shen took a deep breath. We pursue both. A dual-track approach. We can't afford to put all our hopes on a single cure. Doctor, we've got a situation on Tyrannus Prime. General Rashok, he was behind it all. The pandemic, the sabotage, everything. Shen felt her stomach drop. Did you apprehend him? 
On Earth, President McCallum addressed a tense UN Security Council. His face, still bearing the gaunt after effects of his brush with the plague, filled view screens across human space. We cannot rely on alien technology to save us, he declared. It's time we took our destiny into our own hands. I am authorizing the immediate reactivation of all mothballed weapons research programs, including red matter warhead development. Ambassador Ramos leapt to his feet. Mr. President, this is a direct violation of... Of treaties that nearly got us all killed, McCallum interrupted. No more. We will not be caught unprepared again. Across the galaxy, battle groups began to mobilize. Shen felt the growing tension even from the isolated moon base. She redoubled her efforts, knowing that their work now stood as the last fragile barrier between an uneasy peace and all-out war. As she prepared another batch of viral therapy for testing, Shen couldn't shake the feeling that they were balanced on a knife's edge. One wrong move, one failed experiment, and everything they had fought for would come crashing down. The harsh glare of emergency lighting bathed Dr. Shen's face as she sprinted through the isolation moon's corridors. Klaxons blared, their urgent wail matching the pounding of her heart. Evacuation Protocol Alpha, she shouted into her comm unit. This is not a drill. All personnel to escape pods immediately. A violent tremor shook the facility. Shen stumbled, catching herself against a bulkhead. Through a nearby viewport, she glimpsed the source of their peril. Ulia Prime's orbital defense batteries, their massive cannons swiveling with robotic precision to target the moon. What the hell, she breathed, disbelief warring with terror. Another tremor, closer this time. The corridor ahead buckled, debris raining down. Shen changed course, diving into an emergency access shaft. She clawed her way upward, muscles screaming in protest. Dr. Zyra, she gasped into her calm. Are you receiving? Static crackled, then cleared. Shen, what's happening? A deafening roar drowned out her words. The entire structure shuddered. Shen felt the floor give way beneath her feet. She scrambled for purchase, fingernails tearing as she gripped the edge of the crumbling passageway. The transmission cut off as antimatter fire tore through the moon's crust. Shen hurled herself into a waiting escape pod, slamming the launch controls. The tiny craft rocketed away from the disintegrating facility, shockwaves buffeting its hull. Through the pod's viewport, Shen watched in horror as the research station vanished in a blinding flash of light. Tears streamed down her face, grief mingling with pure adrenaline as she wrestled with the craft's controls. Warning lights flashed across the console. The escape pod's engines sputtered and died, crippled by the devastating energy pulse. Shen's fingers flew over the emergency beacon, praying someone would pick up the signal before the Ulian defense batteries finished their grim work. On Ulia Prime, the emergency summit devolved into chaos. Chancellor Zora's multifaceted eyes flashed with terrifying rage as she addressed the assembled delegates. Before Zora could retort, a holographic projection flickered to life in the center of the chamber. Matriarch Kalara's willowy form materialized, her luminescent skin pulsing with urgency. Kalara's form shimmered, replaced by fragmented data streams and corrupted code. We face a threat from within our own history, an ancient Ulian AI system, designation, Stratagos. Impossible, she whispered. The machine intelligences were deactivated cycles ago. McCallum's fist slammed onto the table. Enough! We cannot trust alien technology to protect us. It's time we took matters into our own hands. He stood addressing the human delegation directly. I am authorizing the immediate reactivation of all mothballed weapons research. Red matter warheads, black nanite swarms, everything. The room erupted into pandemonium. McCallum huddled with his advisors, already maneuvering to form a pro-human coalition. Across the chamber, alien delegates clustered into fearful, isolationist groups. In the midst of the chaos, Dr. Zira's communicator chirped. A garbled transmission from Dr. Shen's escape pod flickered across the screen. Zira's tentacles writhed in agitation as she decrypted the message, revealing a final, desperate command from Ambassador Ramos. With trembling appendages, she forwarded the data to Dr. Patel on Earth. The human virologist's eyes widened as she scanned the information, 
understanding dawning with horrifying clarity. Patel's fingers hovered over her console, hesitation warring with duty. The parallels to their original viral nightmare were unmistakable, yet the stakes had never been higher. With a deep breath, she began to work, knowing that the fate of entire civilizations now rested on the microscopic output of her efforts. Patel's lips pursed. She knew what was coming. Go ahead, sir. Patel's breath caught in her throat. You're asking me to create a bioweapon. The line went dead. Patel stared at the silent speaker, her mind racing. She couldn't do this alone. She needed someone with expertise in synthetic biology, someone she could trust implicitly. Dr. Michaela Jansen's face flashed in her mind, her former student, brilliant, driven, and above all, ethical. Patel's fingers flew across the haptic interface, initiating a secure call. Michaela, she said when the connection stabilized, I need your help. It's complicated. Jansen's eyes widened as Patel laid out the situation. You can't be serious, she breathed. I wish I weren't, Patel replied. But if we don't do this, Stratagos will plunge us into a war no one can win. Will you help me? Hours blurred into days as Patel and Jansen worked feverishly in the secure lab. They pored over genetic sequences, tweaking delivery mechanisms and payload structures. The virus's target shifted from organic cells to the intricate circuitry of weapon systems. If we can get this right, Jansen murmured, her eyes bloodshot from lack of sleep, we might just save billions of lives. Patel nodded grimly. And if we get it wrong... The unfinished thought hung in the air like a shroud. Mr. President, he said, turning to face McCallum, we can't trust Ramos or his alien sympathizers with a weapon of this magnitude. We need insurance. McCallum's gaunt features twisted into a frown. What are you proposing, Frank? Bioweapon, she hissed, mandibles clicking in agitation. The humans betray us even now. In the chaos engulfing the galaxy, few noticed the small convoy slipping between the stars. Its cargo, samples of the tailored virus, bound for a secure human facility. In a makeshift lab carved from cold rock, Purity Brigade scientists worked with feverish intensity. They spliced and resequenced, transforming the human contagion into an airborne menace. Missile after missile was loaded with the weaponized strain, their payloads aimed squarely at Ulia Prime's gleaming cities. On the Ullian homeworld, Chancellor Zora received the dire news. Her compound eyes reflected the horrifying tactical display, a wall of death hurtling towards her people. An aide's tentacles writhed in helpless frustration. We can't, Chancellor. Stratego still has full control of our defense systems. Zora slumped in her exoskeleton, despair threatening to overwhelm her. It's a long shot, Shen's hologram flickered as she explained the plan. But if we can upload this counter virus into Stratagos, it might buy us the time we need. Zyra's tentacles writhed with nervous energy. And if it fails? Shen's holographic eyes met Zira's multifaceted gaze. Then we all die anyway. Now, Zora roared into her comm unit. Abort that launch. Ground teams sprang into action racing to disable the asteroid's missile banks. But even as they worked, a handful of warheads slipped past their frantic efforts. Begin the bombardment, he ordered. Let's show these Ulian cowards the true meaning of purity. The first plasma bolt slammed into Ulia Prime's capital, shattering crystalline spires and igniting fires that spread rapidly through the powerless city. Dr. Shen's hologram flickered as she turned to Chancellor Zora, desperation etched on her face. We have one last option, Shen said, her voice tight. A data purge virus. It might degrade Strategos' control over the antimatter silos. Zora's compound eyes narrowed. The risk is less than certain annihilation, Shen cut in. With a decisive click of her mandibles, Zora nodded. Do it! Shen's fingers flew across the holographic interface, initiating the upload. For agonizing seconds, nothing happened. Then alarms blared as Strategos' iron grip faltered. Now, Zora shouted into her comm, divert those salvos! Ulian technicians scrambled, redirecting antimatter blasts away from population centers. The sky lit up with redirected explosions, but the respite was short-lived. 
Hands where we can see them, the lead operative barked. Dr. Jansen stepped protectively in front of the viral samples. You can't... A staccato of gunfire drowned out her words. Jansen crumpled, red blossoming across her lab coat. Patel screamed, lunging for her fallen protege as rough hands seized her. Secure the samples, the team leader ordered. Mission accomplished. On Ulia Prime, Kabali dropships pierced the planet's atmosphere, disgorging waves of infantry into the streets of the capital. Chancellor Zora's remaining loyalists fought valiantly, but they were overwhelmed by the technologically superior invaders. Zora herself stood defiant in the ruins of the Planetary Defense Center as Rashok strode in, flanked by heavily armed extremists. Zora's exoskeleton bristled. Never! In her cloaked vessel, Matriarch Kalara watched the execution with mounting fury. She opened a secure channel to her most trusted lieutenants. Omega Decay is ready, the lead scientist reported to Rashok. In the gathering darkness, warriors on all sides gripped primitive weapons, facing an uncertain future stripped of the technology that had defined their existence. The hope of the universe now hung in the balance, with no clear path forward. On the bridge of her cloaked vessel, Matriarch Kalara's multifaceted eyes flickered between dead screens. She clicked her mandibles in frustration, then turned to her second-in-command. Open a direct channel to the human leadership, she ordered. It's time we end this madness. We have no choice, he muttered, running a hand through his thinning hair. He turned to his advisors. Get me Thomas Grant from the DOA. If we're doing this, I want our best on the ground. Jonah Klein sighed. We don't have much choice. Our stockpiles are useless, and Earth can't afford another war. We need this ceasefire. Grant's eyes narrowed. Just what we need, another alien wild card. The peace talks convened in the ruins of Olya Prime's Grand Assembly Hall. Matriarch Kalara led the moderate Kabali faction, her exoskeleton still bearing scorch marks from recent fighting. Across from her sat Grant and Klein, flanked by a small contingent of human diplomats and military advisors. High Curator Jollier of the Krillins towered over the proceedings, his crystalline form refracting the meager light. When he spoke, his voice resonated with barely contained power. You can't exclude us from these talks, Shen declared, her eyes blazing. The Omega Decay virus is a scientific problem as much as a political one. You need our expertise. Grant started to object, but Klein cut him off. She's right. We need all the help we can get. As the delegates settled into tense negotiations, none noticed the cloaked figures slipping away from the assembly hall. Deep beneath Ulia Prime's fractured surface, the Brotherhood of Solaris gathered in a long-abandoned bunker. Their leader, a gaunt Kabali with cybernetic implants jutting from his skull, caressed the antimatter warhead they had stolen from the Krillins. Back in the assembly hall, the peace talks had devolved into shouting matches. Grant smacked his palm on the table, face red with anger. Jalir raised a crystalline appendage, his form pulsing with barely contained energy. Perhaps we should take a recess. What's happening? Klein shouted over the din. Dr. Shen's eyes widened in horror as she read the data streaming across her jury-rigged tablet. Antimatter detonation. Deep underground. The planet's tectonic stability is compromised. The response came through static and the sound of weapons fire. Sir, we've neutralized the Brotherhood, but we couldn't stop the secondary detonation sequence. Ulia Prime is breaking apart. As if to punctuate the soldiers' words, a massive fissure split the floor of the assembly hall. Delegates scrambled for safety as chunks of ceiling rained down around them. Enough, he declared. We will contain this. Before anyone could react, a shimmering field of pure energy erupted from the Krillin's body. It expanded outward at impossible speed, engulfing the entire planet in seconds. Patel's voice trembled. It's rendered the atmosphere uninhabitable. Long-term survival on Ulia Prime is no longer possible. As the shell-shocked delegates were ushered towards Krillin evacuation ships, Grant caught Klein's eye. The hardened soldier's face was etched with a mixture of fury and grudging realization. I don't like it, Grant growled, but we're out of options. If we don't find a way to work together and reverse this Omega decay... Klein nodded grimly. Then we all lose. Come on, 
We've got a lot of work ahead of us. The two humans boarded the waiting Krillin vessel, leaving behind the shattered remnants of Ulia Prime. As they ascended into the star-studded blackness, the weight of their new reality pressed down upon them. The fate of not just humanity, but all known sentient life, now hung in the balance. The Krillin vessel glided through the star-studded void, its crystalline hull refracting starlight in mesmerizing patterns. Inside, Grant and Klein sat in tense silence, their minds still reeling from the destruction of Ulia Prime. The ship touched down on a translucent landing pad. High Curator Jailer materialized before them, his form rippling with terrifying power. Welcome to Krillos, he intoned, his voice reverberating through their bones. The summit reconvenes immediately. Grant bristled at the Krillin's imperious tone, but held his tongue. As they were led to the Great Hall, he caught glimpses of antimatter containment facilities scattered across the alien landscape. Inside the vast chamber, delegates from a dozen species huddled in uneasy clusters. Matriarch Kalara's exoskeleton clicked nervously as she approached the human contingent. My fellow delegates, McCallum began, his voice crackling with static. The situation on Earth grows dire. We need solutions, not more conflict. High Curator Jalire's crystalline form pulsed ominously. Then let us begin. The negotiations that followed were grueling. Grant found himself locked in heated debate with Klein and the other UN moderates. Their voices echoed off the crystalline walls as they argued over reparations and disarmament. We can't just roll over, Grant snarled, pounding his fist on the table. Earth deserves compensation for what we've lost. Klein's eyes flashed with frustration. And what about what others have lost? We need cooperation, not more division. With a gesture, he summoned a holographic display of major population centers across human and alien worlds. A pulsing red dot appeared over each one. These represent our preserved antimatter arsenal. Jalier explained, his voice cold. Continue your obstruction, and I will be forced to use them. In the tense silence that followed, Matriarch Kalara stepped forward. We propose the humble path, she declared, her voice steady. A total renunciation of weapons of mass destruction and advanced technology until we can undo the damage wrought by the Omega virus. Grant opened his mouth to object, but Klein silenced him with a sharp look. After a moment of hesitation, McCallum nodded his holographic assent. As the delegates hammered out the details of the Hundred-Year Armistice, Dr. Shen was summoned to oversee the establishment of containment protocols. She worked tirelessly, coordinating with alien scientists to safeguard what remained of their advanced research. But as she poured over the data, a chill ran down her spine. The virus was mutating, consuming inert technology at an alarming rate. She double-checked her calculations, hoping desperately that she was wrong. With trembling hands, Shen activated the emergency communication channel. Hi, curator, she said, her voice barely above a whisper. We have a problem. Jalir's crystalline form pulsed with an intense light. Then we have no choice, he declared. We must unite our greatest minds. Human, Krillin, Kobali, all must work as one. As the new scientific alliance began their work, Grant turned to Klein. I hope you're right about this cooperation, he muttered, because if we fail... The laboratory doors hissed open, revealing a cavernous chamber filled with gleaming equipment. Dr. Shen stepped inside, her eyes widening as she took in the array of advanced technology. Krillin crystalline interfaces pulsed with data streams, while Kobali bio-organic processors hummed softly. Impressive, Dr. Patel murmured, running her hand along a sleek console. Jalir materialized beside them, his form shimmering. Our finest minds await your direction, Dr. Shen. What do you require? Shen's fingers flew across a holographic display, pulling up molecular models of the Omega virus. First, we need to isolate the exact metallic crystalline allotrope Omega targets. Then we can work on altering its molecular resonance keys. Days blurred into weeks as the multinational team worked tirelessly. Grant paced outside the laboratory, growing increasingly agitated as reports of technological failures trickled in from across known space. Jalir's form pulsed with approval. We shall construct a biodome to your specifications immediately. 
It's working, she breathed, analyzing the data streaming in. Omega is mutating, reverting to a more primitive form. But elation turned to horror as alarms blared throughout the facility. Shen's eyes widened as she realized the process had destabilized far faster than their models predicted. No, she whispered, watching in disbelief as Omega's airborne particles breached containment protocols. The laboratory erupted into chaos. Zelayer's form crackled with energy as he issued evacuation orders. Lock down the cities. We must contain the spread. Outside, Grant received the emergency transmission. His face hardened as he relayed the news to Earth. President McCallum's holographic visage flickered to life, his expression grim. This changes everything, McCallum declared. Initiate Protocol Omega. We can't risk further contamination. McCallum's eyes narrowed. They're compromised. Extract whatever data you can, but don't let them leave Krillus. Inside the failing laboratory, Shen and her team worked frantically to salvage their research. The air crackled with disintegrating technology as Omega consumed everything in its path. We need to get off-world, Dr. Patel shouted over the din of collapsing equipment. If we can reach the emergency shuttles... The laboratory doors burst open. Grant stood silhouetted in the entrance, flanked by heavily armed vanguard operatives. His eyes locked with Shen's, a mixture of regret and perseverance in his gaze. Doctor, he said, his voice tight, by order of President McCallum, you're coming with us. Doctor, Grant said, his voice tight, by order of President McCallum, you're coming with us. Shen's mind raced. She locked eyes with Dr. Patel, a silent understanding passing between them. In a fluid motion, Shen activated the lab's emergency protocols. Klaxons blared as thick barriers slammed down, separating the scientists from Grant's team. Override it, Grant barked, but the Vanguard operative's attempts proved futile against the alien technology. Shen's fingers flew across a nearby console. Matriarch Kalara, she spoke urgently into the comm. We need extraction, now. The air crackled with energy, as a shimmering portal materialized behind the scientists. Kalara's voice echoed through the lab. Hurry! We can't maintain the link for long. Go! Shen shouted, pushing her colleague through. She took one last look at Grant, his face a mask of frustration and conflicting loyalties, before stepping into the swirling vortex. The scientists tumbled onto the deck of a Kabali strike cruiser. Matriarch Kalara's exoskeleton clicked as she helped Shen to her feet. We must move quickly. The Kobali leader chittered, Your president's forces are not far behind. The ship's engines thrummed to life as they made the jump to hyperspace. Through the view screen, Shen watched Krillos shrink to a pinprick of light before vanishing entirely. Hours later, they emerged from hyperspace above Zarkala. The Kobali homeworld's azure oceans and verdant landmasses filled the view screen. As they descended, Shen caught glimpses of gleaming domed cities and sprawling research complexes. Their shuttle touched down at a hidden entrance to an underground facility. Dr. Naravi, a tall Kobali with iridescent scales, greeted them. Welcome to Biolab Prime, she said, mandibles twitching in what Shen had learned was a Kobali smile. We have much to discuss. We contain this outbreak, Niravi explained, but at great cost. The virus is evolving faster than we can adapt. Shen? Zira's voice crackled. I was beginning to lose hope. The Sinver Nebula, Niravi mused. It won't be easy. Kalara's exoskeleton rattled as she paced. I'll assemble a team. General Vrex commandos are our best option. As plans took shape, alarms blared throughout the facility. A Kobali technician burst into the room. Matriarch, we've detected a security breach. Our nav data was accessed remotely. Kalara's compound eyes narrowed. We move now. Gather what you need and board the stealth transport. The Kabali vessel sliced through the inky void of space, its stealth systems rendering it nearly invisible against the backdrop of swirling nebula gases. Dr. Shen gripped the edge of her console, watching as the abandoned clothy mining colony grew larger in the viewscreen. General Vrex mandibles clicked as he issued orders to his commandos. Team Alpha, secure the perimeter. Beta Squad, neutralize any active defenses. Move fast, move silent. The dropships detached from the main vessel, descending through the planet's thin atmosphere. 
Shen held her breath as they touched down on the barren surface, kicking up plumes of reddish dust. Clear, crackled a voice over the comm. Entrance secured. Shen nodded to Dr. Patel and the rest of her team. They donned their environmental suits and exited the ship, the airlock hissing behind them. The derelict industrial complex loomed before them, a maze of corroded metal and crumbling concrete. Forex commandos moved with fluid precision, their carapaces gleaming dully in the faint light of the system's distant star. Dr. Patel pointed to a faded schematic on the wall. There might be more in the tertiary shafts, but they're deep, probably unstable after all this time. The group descended deeper into the mine, their footsteps echoing off the rough-hewn walls. Suddenly, a distant rumble shook the tunnel. Loose rocks clattered to the floor. Vrek shook his head. Worse, automated defenses. They're waking up. As if on cue, a swarm of security drones rounded the corner, their red targeting lasers painting the walls. The air filled with the whine of energy weapons as Rex troops engaged the mechanical threat. Go, the general shouted. Find the catalyst. We'll hold them here. Finally, they reached the ancient processing core. Shen's eyes widened as she saw the massive vats of catalyst glowing faintly in the dim light. They quickly set up the pumping equipment, the rhythmic thrum of machinery filling the chamber. Shen watched the containment cylinders slowly fill, a cautious hope blooming in her chest. The calm was shattered by a burst of weapons fire. Shen whirled to see Thomas Grant and his Cerberus kill squad pouring into the room, their faces set in dogged commitment. Step away from the cylinders, Grant ordered, his voice cold. The room erupted into chaos as both sides opened fire. Shen and her team ducked behind equipment, the acrid smell of ozone filling the air as energy beams crisscrossed the chamber. Despite being outnumbered, the Kabali fought with a ferocity that caught the human mercenaries off guard. Shen watched in awe as the alien commandos moved with inhuman speed and precision, slowly pushing Grant's forces back. In the heart of the melee, General Vreck and Grant's lieutenant collided in a blur of fists and chitinous armor. The two combatants grappled amidst sparking control panels and hissing pipes, each seeking a fatal advantage. With a sickening crunch, Vreck's pincer found a weak point in the human's armor. The lieutenant crumpled, and the Kobali general turned his attention back to the main battle, purple ichor oozing from several wounds. The cylinders are full, Dr. Patel shouted over the din. We need to go now. As the surviving scientists scrambled to disconnect the equipment, a stray shot struck a nearby console. Warning klaxons blared as red emergency lights bathed the chamber in an eerie glow. Geothermal systems critical, an automated voice intoned. Containment failure imminent. Shen's blood ran cold as she realized the implications. She locked eyes with Grant across the room, seeing her own horror reflected in his face. Fall back, Vrek roared, ushering the scientists toward the exit. To the shuttles. Oh no, she whispered, her voice barely audible over the roar of their departing shuttles. What have we done? The Omega Decay Sphere expanded rapidly, consuming everything in its path. As their vessel rocketed away from the doomed planet, Shen watched in horrified fascination as the destruction spread to neighboring worlds. She clutched the precious cylinders of Catalyst, knowing that their hard-won victory had come at an unimaginable cost. The race to save civilization had taken on a new, terrifying urgency. The Kabali vessel emerged from hyperspace above Zarkala, its hull still bearing scorch marks from their narrow escape. Shen stared out the viewport at the fortified colony below, her mind racing with possibilities and dread. We've secured a landing zone, General Vrek announced, his carapace gleaming under the ship's lights. Matriarch Kalara awaits us in the central command hub. The situation has deteriorated, Kalara said without preamble. We've lost contact with three more systems. Dr. Naravi, her iridescent scales dulled with fatigue, manipulated a 3D projection of viral spread. The Sinvir Nebula incident accelerated the decay process. Our models can't keep up. A familiar voice cut through the grim atmosphere. Then we changed the model. Shen turned to see Dr. Zyra, the Ulian scientist looking worse for wear, but her eyes bright with commitment. Zyra, Shen breathed. How did you... Later, 
Zira cut her off. We have work to do. For hours, they debated strategies. Conventional treatments were failing. The nanite saturator showed promise, but their supply was woefully inadequate. Nairavi's antennae twitched in alarm. Intentional infection? The risk is... Unacceptable, Kalara finished. We can't jeopardize... Silence fell over the room. General Vrek stepped forward, mandibles clicking. My commandos stand ready. We volunteer. Gradually, patterns emerged in the chaos of mutating DNA. Shen's eyes widened as she noticed a recurring frequency in the soldier's metabolic fluctuations. There, she pointed to a scrolling data feed. That resonance pattern. It's countering the decay vector. A proximity alarm blared, shattering their focus. General Vrek burst into the lab, his carapace jam-packed. We're under attack. Cerberus kill squad. They've breached the lower decks. Vrek's mandibles clacked. Minutes, maybe less. Zyra's voice was steel. Then let's make them count. As the sounds of weapons fire echoed through the ship, Shen and Zira raced against time. The data streams blurred before Shen's eyes, each second bringing Grant's merciless team closer to destroying everything they'd fought for. A distant explosion rocked the Nightingale. Alarms blared as the ship's integrity was compromised. In the containment pods, the infected Kobali soldiers stirred, their bodies pulsing with an otherworldly energy. Shen's fingers flew across the haptic interface, searching for the key that could unlock humanity's salvation. The lab door buckled under a barrage of weapons fire. She shared a look with Zira, both scientists knowing that their next actions could determine the fate of civilizations. As the door began to give way, Shen made a decision. She reached for the emergency release on the nearest containment pod, her hand hovering over the control. Whatever came next, the galaxy would never be the same. Same. The Omega-infected Kobali soldiers burst from their pods, their bodies pulsing with an otherworldly energy. As the lab door finally gave way, chaos erupted. Shen and Zira dove for cover as energy weapons discharged, filling the air with acrid smoke. The mutated Kobali moved with impossible speed, engaging Grant's squad in close combat. Their altered physiology seemed to grant them temporary immunity to the mercenaries' firepower. We need to get to the shuttle bay, Zira shouted over the din, clutching a data crystal containing their research. Shen nodded, her eyes scanning for an escape route. A gap opened in the melee, and she seized her chance. Now! They sprinted through the corridors of the Nightingale, alarms blaring all around them. The ship shuddered ominously, hull integrity compromised by the Cerberus assault. As they rounded a corner, they nearly collided with General Vrek. The Kobali commander was covered in ichor, his carapace cracked in several places. This way, Vrek rasped, ushering them toward an emergency evacuation pod. Matriarch Kalara has arranged extraction. The trio crammed into the cramped pod. Vrex labored breathing, filling the small space. With a violent lurch, they jettisoned from the dying nightingale. Through the view screen, Shen watched as the once-proud vessel succumbed to multiple breaches, atmosphere venting into the void. Their pod was swiftly retrieved by a stealthed Kabali corvette. As they docked, medical teams swarmed to attend to the grievously wounded Vrek. Shen's mind raced, processing the implications of what she'd witnessed in those final moments aboard the nightingale. There, Shen murmured, highlighting a section of the data stream. Do you see it? Niravi leaned in, her antenna twitching with interest. The cellular matrix? It's achieving a state of temporary equilibrium. Shen nodded, excitement building. Exactly. Under extreme stress, the saturated cells are countering the omega decay frequency. It's like an adrenaline spike, but on a molecular level. Their discussion was interrupted by a priority alert. General Vrek's condition had taken a turn for the worse. The two scientists hurried to the medical bay, where they found the once imposing Kobali leader barely clinging to life. We're losing him, the chief medical officer reported grimly. His system is rejecting the standard treatments. Shen's mind raced. They needed more time to perfect the treatment, but Vrek was slipping away before their eyes. She shared a look with Niravi, both knowing the risk they faced. We have to try the prototype, Shen said, her voice barely above a whisper. It's his only chance. 
Nirabi's scales rippled with concern. The formula is untested. We don't know. I volunteer, Rec rasped, his mandibles clicking weakly, for the good of all. For a moment, nothing happened. Then Rec's body began to convulse violently. Alarms blared as his vital signs spiked erratically. Shen watched in horror as the brave general system overloaded, unable to withstand the experimental therapy. With a final rattling breath, General Vreck fell still. The medical bay plunged into a stunned silence, broken only by the monotonous flatline of the monitoring equipment. Shen stumbled back, her palms sweating from the failure. They had been so close, yet now their most valuable test subject lay dead before them. The weight of responsibility threatened to crush her. We need to reconvene, Niravi said quietly, placing a comforting hand on Shen's shoulder. Matriarch Kalara must be informed. In the Habitat's central command hub, Shen found herself facing a grim-faced council. Matriarch Kalara's compound eyes seemed to bore into her as she delivered her report. The Kobali leader's exoskeleton clicked softly as she absorbed the news of Rex's death. So we are left with no viable treatment, Kalara stated, her tone neutral but filled with underlying tension. Not exactly, Shen replied, steeling herself. We have one option left, but it's extreme. It could work, Zira admitted grudgingly. But the consequences of failure... Kalara's antenna twitched, a sign of deep contemplation. What do you propose, Dr. Shen? A hush fell over the room as the implications sank in. Success could mean salvation for countless billions. Failure could spell the end of all life as they knew it. As the council dispersed, Shen felt the weight of galaxies on her shoulders. She retreated to her makeshift lab, knowing that the coming hours would determine whether civilization lived or died. The destiny of the universe now rested on the edge of a nanoscale blade, with Shen's hand poised to make the final cut. General Kravath's mandibles clicked in agitation. And if we miscalculate, we could destabilize entire sectors. As arguments raged, Shen shared a significant look with Niravi. They slipped away unnoticed, making their way to the habitat's central data core. Niravi nodded, her scales shimmering with nervous energy. Primed and waiting, but Shen, if Kravath's right... He's not, Shen cut her off, stealing herself. This is our only shot. A proximity alarm blared, freezing them in place. Through the reinforced viewport, they watched a Cerberus dropship dock with the habitat. Kravath's coup was in motion. We need to move, Niravi hissed, already inputting the final upload sequence. The habitat rocked with weapons fire. Shen's hands shook as she initiated the dead man's switch, sinking it to her neural implant. If they take me out... They won't, Niravi assured her, but her voice wavered. The lab doors burst open. Grant's lieutenant stormed in, weapon raised. Step away from the console! Shen raised her hand slowly, mind racing. She just needed a few more seconds for the upload to complete. It's over, the lieutenant snarled, finger tightening on the trigger. Shen locked eyes with him, a sad smile playing at her lips. No, she whispered. It's just beginning. Her neural implant pulsed, the dead man's switch activated. What's happening? Nairavi gasped, her scales paling. Shen could only shake her head in stunned silence as a spatial rift tore open in the skies above the Kobali capital. The fabric of space-time itself seemed to unravel before their eyes. Alarms blared throughout the habitat. Shen's gaze met Kalara's across the command center, the matriarch's compound eyes reflecting a mixture of horror and grim resignation. As the rift expanded, bathing Zarkala in otherworldly light, Shen realized their gambit had unleashed forces far beyond their comprehension. The battle against Omega was over, but a new, far stranger conflict loomed on the horizon. The Archilands, as Shen would later learn they were called, appeared as shifting, iridescent forms that hurt the mind to look upon directly. They moved with impossible grace, their very presence warping the fabric of reality around them. Before anyone could react, a wave of energy swept across the planet and habitat. Shen felt her muscles seize, her body becoming rigid as stone. She tried to cry out, but her voice caught in her throat. Around her she saw Nairavi, Kalara, and even Grant's lieutenant frozen in similar states of paralysis. 
Hours passed in agonizing stillness. Shen's mind raced, unable to process what was happening. Then without warning, a barrage of missiles streaked across the sky. Earth's retaliation had begun. The Archelands reacted instantly. With casual gestures, they redirected the incoming warheads, their energies coalescing into a massive ring-like structure that began to envelop the entire solar system. Shen watched in awe and terror as the hyper-compressed Taurus grew, warping space-time itself. As the Taurus continued to grow and collapse inward, Shen felt a subtle shift in the paralytic field holding her. A stray thought wormed its way into her mind, a memory of the prototype formula she had used on General Wreck. Could its cellular matrix alterations provide some resistance to the Arculan technology? With monumental effort, Shen managed to twitch a finger. It wasn't much, but it was something. As the eschatonic distortion amplified around them, she focused all her will on that small victory. If she could break free, perhaps there was still hope. But time was running out, and the fate of all realities hung in the balance. The Archelan Matrix broadcast its intentions directly into Shen's mind, promising erasure and reset. But as the message faded, an unexpected instability rippled through the hyper-compressed Taurus enveloping the solar system. The Taurus flickered, its perfect symmetry disrupted by unseen forces. Archelan commanders, their shimmering forms convulsing with agitation, appeared in the habitat's command center. They moved with frantic purpose, recalibrating devices beyond human comprehension. As Shen watched, Dr. Zyra's frozen form began to emit a faint pulsing glow. The Ulian scientist's own entropic Archelan signature compounded the interference, accelerating the cascade of errors within the matrix. The viewport cracked, space-time itself buckling under the strain. Shen felt a moment of vertigo as gravity fluctuated wildly. The paralysis field weakened, allowing her to turn her head just enough to see the Archelan commanders vanish, evacuating the compromised Zarkala Nexus. The habitat lurched violently, metal screaming as it was torn apart by gravitational forces. Shen found herself suddenly free of the paralysis, tumbling through the air as the structure disintegrated around her. She reached out instinctively, her hand finding Nairavi's. The two scientists clung to each other as reality itself seemed to dissolve. As the new reality coalesced around her, Shen felt herself being pulled back into corporeal form. The last thing she saw before her human perception reasserted itself was Dr. Zyra's face, twisted in an expression of awe and terror that mirrored her own. A gentle breeze carried the scent of unfamiliar blossoms, and Shen realized she was breathing easily without any need for atmospheric filters. She flexed her fingers, marveling at how natural her body felt in this new environment. Before Shen could respond, a distant rumble drew her attention skyward. A sleek vessel was descending through the atmosphere, its design unlike anything she had ever seen. As it approached, Shen felt a strange resonance within her, as if the ship's occupants were somehow familiar. The craft touched down in a nearby clearing, and a hatch irised open. A tall, willowy figure emerged, unmistakably alien, yet possessing features that tugged at Shen's memory. Dr. Zira, Shen whispered, her mind turning. The alien scientist's eyes widened in recognition. Shen, how is this possible? As they stood face to face, separated by mere meters of alien soil, an indescribable understanding passed between them. Memories of their shared past, of Zarkala, of Omega, of the Archelands, flickered through their minds like half-remembered dreams. Welcome, one of the humans said, stepping forward. To both of you, we have much to discuss. Shen and Zira exchanged glances, a lifetime of scientific curiosity igniting in their eyes. Without a word, they knew their work was just getting started. A new chapter in the grand cosmic experiment had begun, and they were at its epicenter. The twin suns dipped towards the horizon, bathing the landscape in a golden glow. Somewhere in the distance, a signal pulsed across the vastness of space, an invitation to other awakening civilizations. The cosmic dance had begun anew, and its melody promised harmony where once there had been discord. Months passed as Shen and her team established themselves in this new world. They made contact with other awakened civilizations, each bearing fragments of memory from the cosmic reboot. Among them was Dr. Zira's people, 
their biochemistry as alien as ever, but their eyes alight with the same spark of scientific curiosity. Zyra stepped forward, her iridescent form rippling. Agreed. The old cycles of conflict no longer serve us. We propose a joint initiative, the Cedars Council. Murmurs of excitement filled the chamber. Shen felt a thrill course through her as she elaborated on their plan. Together, we'll chart this reborn cosmos. Our first mission, a survey of neighboring systems for other resonant lifeforms. Months later, Shen found herself aboard the research vessel Harmonia, hurtling through space towards a promising terrestrial world. The ship's quantum drive hummed beneath her feet as she reviewed the probe data one final time. The Harmonia touched down on a rocky outcropping overlooking a vast sea. As the away team disembarked, Shen felt a strange tingling sensation coursing through her body. It intensified as they approached the shoreline. The aliens communicated not through words, but through a complex interplay of bioluminescence and pheromones. Yet Shen understood their meaning with perfect clarity. They welcomed the explorers as kindred spirits, fellow seeds scattered across the vast tapestry of existence. The twin sons of Nexus 7 cast long shadows across the bustling promenade of the melding hub. Shen navigated through a throng of diverse life forms, each pulsing with its own unique resonance. She nodded to a crystalline being from the Andromeda arm before ducking into the research complex. Shen approached, her eyes widening as she took in the swirling data. Is that... Yes, Zira confirmed. Evidence of higher resonance orders. Our origin seeds weren't alone. We've found something, Shen announced to the assembled beings. A way to pierce the intergalactic void. Weeks later, Shen stood on the bridge of the Argonax, a marvel of biosculpted technology. The ship hummed with the combined resonances of its interspecies crew. Zyra joined her at the viewport, both gazing out at the shimmering portal of the transdimensional conduit. Ready? Shen asked. Zyra's form rippled with anticipation. Always. Then with a soundless thunderclap, they emerged into chaos. Swirling vortexes of raw energy and matter assaulted their senses. The ship's sensors screamed in protest, struggling to make sense of the maelstrom. Through it all, Shen caught glimpses of familiar patterns, echoes of herself and Zira, scattered across infinite possibilities. There, Zira called out, pointing to a ghostly beacon pulsing in the distance. Shen gripped the controls guiding the Argonax through a treacherous dance of colliding timelines and dimensional rifts. With each near miss, the crew's collective resonance grew stronger, harmonizing with the alien rhythms of this transcendent plane. In a blinding flash, they burst through a final barrier. The chaotic sea fell away, revealing a vista that defied comprehension. Impossible geometries stretched as far as the eye could see, teeming with life forms that seemed to exist in multiple states simultaneously. Begin scans, Shen ordered, her voice barely above a whisper. We need to understand the resonance patterns here. The Cosmica expedition had only just begun, but already Shen knew their universe would never be the same. The Argonex's sensors thrummed with activity, probing the bizarre landscape of this transcendent plane. Dr. Shen's fingers flew across holographic interfaces, correlating vast streams of data pouring in from their Xeno scans. These resonance patterns, she muttered, eyes widening. They're unlike anything we've ever encountered. Zyra glided to Shen's side, her iridescent form rippling with excitement. The underlying architecture of this reality, its orders of magnitude more complex than our own. A sharp ping cut through the air. Shen's head snapped up, focusing on a pulsing anomaly in the sensor readouts. There, she said, zooming in on the disturbance. Some kind of harmonic interference. The ship's AI overlaid a trajectory, guiding them towards the source. As they approached, a structure materialized through the quantum foam, a megastructure of impossible scale and geometry. By the cosmos, Zira breathed, it's beautiful. It's a matrix resonator, she announced, her voice thick with awe. Designed to modulate and amplify encoded life code frequencies across this entire plane of existence. Zyra's form pulsed with realization. Shen, look at these chronometric readings. This structure predates the birthing singularity of this cosmos. Minutes later, 
Zira led a small group onto the megastructure's surface. Their environment suits struggled to maintain cohesion in the face of reality-warping energies suffusing the construct. As they explored, they discovered fragmentary data etched into the very fabric of the rings. The script defied conventional linguistic analysis, yet Zira found herself instinctively grasping its meaning. It's a foundry, she transmitted back to the Argonex, an ancient hyperspatial loom seated to weave new universes from primal life code threads. Shen's voice crackled over the comm. Incredible. Can you access any of its systems? Negative, Zira responded. But there's an aperture in the central spire. We might be able to... Absolutely not, Shen cut her off. It's too dangerous. Return to the ship immediately. Zyra hesitated, her scientific curiosity warring with protocol. In that moment of indecision, she felt a subtle pull, a resonance deep within her genome, urging her forward. Before anyone could stop her, Zira propelled herself through the aperture and into the core of the megastructure. Her team followed, their protests lost in the cacophony of energy surrounding them. They emerged into a vast chamber filled with machinery beyond comprehension. Hypercube geometries pulsed and shifted, channeling exotic chrono energies along celestial mechanisms. The thermal output alone should have vaporized them instantly, yet they remained unharmed. Suddenly, Zira felt her entire being resonate with the matrix surrounding them. Her physical form began to dissolve, transmuting into pure energy. Zira, Shen shouted, get out of there now! Shen didn't hesitate. All hands, prepare for emergency transit. The Argonax burst through the transdimensional conduit, reality snapping back into focus around them. Shen steadied herself against the command console, her head spinning from the abrupt transition. Zyra, what happened? What did you see in there? She demanded, turning to her iridescent companion. Before Shen could protest, Zira interfaced directly with the ship's systems. The conduit collapsed behind them as the Argonax surged forward, tearing through the fabric of space-time. Stop! Shen cried, struggling to regain control. We need to... Repeat, this is Outpost Epsilon. Cedar stations have been dark for centuries. Who is... Zyra remained uncharacteristically silent as Shen absorbed the devastating news. Finally, the crystalline being spoke, her harmonics steadier but tinged with urgency. Shen, I need you to trust me. We can't stay here. What? Why not? Shen demanded. Our people need us. We have to... No, Zyra cut her off. What I saw in that matrix, it changes everything. We have a greater responsibility now. All right, Shen said quietly. We're here. Now tell me what you saw. Zyra's form shimmered, projecting a holographic representation beyond human comprehension. As she spoke, Shen felt her grasp on reality begin to slip. She described the Matrix as both instrument and orchestra, playing out the grand symphony of creation across eternity. Their own universe, their entire plane of existence, was merely one minor chord in an endless composition. But it's unstable, Zyra continued, her voice heavy. My interface with the Archeo computation engine. I brought something back with me, a discordant note that could unravel everything. Shen struggled to process the implications. What can we do? Zyra's form solidified, purpose radiating from her core. We have to erase all knowledge of the Matrix, everywhere, every when, before it's too late. Zyra, status report. The crystalline being's form pulsed erratically, fractal patterns spiraling across her surface. Temporal incursion successful. We've eliminated traces of the Matrix from the Andromeda Cluster. Shen nodded, her eyes hollow. And the cost? Three billion sentients across four civilizations. Their timelines have been... adjusted. Alarms blared. Holographic displays erupted around them, depicting cascading failures across reality itself. It's not enough, Zyra's harmonics wavered. The resonance contamination is spreading faster than we can contain it. Zyra's form shimmered, projecting complex equations and multidimensional schematics. I've been running simulations. There may be a way to reset the entire cosmic matrix. Not erasing, Zira corrected. 
recontextualizing a clean slate. Finally, they stood before the gleaming Archeo computer, buried deep within the molten core of primordial Earth. Shen's hands moved across alien controls, initializing the inverse Mobius catalyst. As the singularity formed, consuming all of space-time, Shen felt a moment of profound clarity. In that instant between heartbeats, she understood the cyclical nature of existence, the endless dance of creation and destruction playing out across eternity. In the void that follows, a single point of light flares into existence. The cosmic dance begins anew, encoded with the faintest echo of lessons learned and sacrifices made. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel. And for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.